guys, welcome back to my channel. This week's video is going to be a number generator picks how long I read every single day. Which makes me nervous because I don't know why actually it just makes me nervous I set aside a few books that I'm going to be pulling from over the next week While I'm doing this all books from my TBR from my last video and I'm gonna be setting this little wheel of fortune looking number generator Maximum of 10 hours every single day. That's as much as I can give anything more than that And I can't have a social life and I'm trying to be better about having a social life. Today, <laughs> I don't have much going on, but I would really prefer to not read more than eight hours today. It's currently 10.57 when I'm starting this video. I wanna have time to go for a walk this afternoon. <laughs> I love how that's my only priority for the day. Like I don't want it to hit 10 hours because then I won't have time to go for a walk. I'm not gonna be reading all of these hours for every single day in order. I might be, I'm probably gonna be breaking it up a bit, especially if it's like above eight hours, I will be breaking it up. Let's get started, spin. It picked eight hours. It literally picked eight hours. What book should we start with? Mm. I'm starting with this, which is cr uh, that's funny because in my TBR video, this is the one I had like the lowest expectations for. I have really high expectations for every single one of these books except for King of Country. For some reason, I'm like, eh, it could be bad. Some of the comments in my last video when I was saying I had low expectations for this, people were saying it's really good, and that completely changed my opinion on it, I think. And now I'm excited to read it. It only has 1,700 reviews. It's really not that popular of a book, like I thought it was. Alrighty, let's get into it. I need to find my Kindle. I've been really into having ambiance while I read. What are we gonna go with today? Are we gonna go with Tavern music? Fireplace. I'm thinking tavern. Fantasy tavern. <gasps> Celtic music to help stress relief. This is not the vibe of the book at all. But that's okay. Did that start? It did. It did. I'm literally 3% into the book. <laughs> I love him. I literally love him. I take back everything I said about my hesitancy and my TBR video. I am legit 15 pages in. His original name is Miles. I think he goes by Kyle. I don't know. He met Piper. Literally first chapter of the book. And she's kind of like, meh. And he's super famous. So for her to be like, meh, he's like, why is she like, meh? Like, she doesn't really care about me. And I'm intrigued. And so he like keeps feeling drawn to her and he keeps wanting to talk to her and she's just like I don't like country music it's always about beer girls or what else does she say beer girls or something corn I don't remember what she says nearing the end of their interaction he goes I'll write a song that has nothing to do with beer trucks or heartbreak just for you <laughs> and I just know he's gonna do it <laughs> this is how I'm picturing him this is how I'm picturing her, because we haven't really gotten any descriptors of her yet. I'll loop back around and we'll probably change this. Oh, she's redheaded. Yeah, I overlooked that. Okay, so not her. I'm putting a picture of me. Her. This is how I picture her. I wonder if there's fan art. Let's go look up stuff on Pinterest and see if there's anything about it. When you search it on Pinterest, it's really cute. Why does Killian Murphy come up? It that's because of my obsession with him. It's literally an ad for Killian Murphy. This man just made a grilled cheese with mayonnaise. I might have to, um... <laughs> what the fuck? Is that a normal thing? <laughs> he literally, this girl's vegetarian. And she's hungry. And she didn't eat much for dinner. She only ate vegetables. Because Piper had to go to small town Texas where Kyle is, Miles is, whatever the fuck his name is and try to get him to sign with the record label that Piper works for because his contract ended and he doesn't want to re-sign with them. But Piper's boss was like, you have to go and you have to get him to re-sign. So she's here staying on the ranch <laughs> in the bunkhouse that has no air conditioning. And she's hungry because she didn't eat much for dinner because they had like mainly meat. 
So this man's like, okay, what do you, like, okay, I'll make you something. He pulls out bread, mayonnaise, and two thick slices of cheese. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, and butter. What's the mayonnaise for? <laughs> Is that a normal thing? Maybe I'm being really judgmental and some of you guys are watching this, like you don't put mayonnaise on your grilled cheese. I have never. I'm also a mustard girl. Mustard over mayo over here. I do like mayo though, but I've never heard of mayonnaise on a grilled cheese sandwich. Girl, I've been sitting here for five hours. <laughs> I've gotten up to pee and get a hoodie. That's about, look how much left I have on this book. I'm predicting this is gonna be like a three and a half, 3.75 star read for me, but still, I'm flying through it. There are a few quirks throughout it where I'm like, eh, but overall, it's a good book. Oh, the end of that? Wait, Six Summers to Fall. I've seen this book before. It says you can read Harper and Drew's story, who we got to see a little bit, not much of Drew, but a little bit of Harper in this book, and they got married in this book. Six Summers to Fall. I know what that book cover looks like. Let me look it up. Oh, this is the same author. I've, I've been recommended Six Summers to Fall a lot. Okay, maybe we'll read that one. I liked it. I'm gonna give this book three and a half stars. Wasn't anything revolutionary, but it was a lot of fun and I did like it. I have two hours and 22 minutes left of reading for today. I'm gonna put a pause on it. I'll probably read the last two hours in bed later. I'm trying to decide what book I wanna start next. I wanna read something on my Kindle since I'm gonna be reading at night. So we'll probably start Unexpected or you know what? I still have to finish Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I have about 30% of Vicious left. I've been reading Vicious by V.E. Schwab. This is my first book by V.E. Schwab because Taylor recommended The Invisible, is it The Invisible? Not The Secret. The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and Vicious. And I was like, which one should I read first? And she said Vicious also. Sorry, you can probably hear Phineas snoring. Sister is passed out and snoring pretty loud. I've been reading Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I've been bouncing back and forth between it and other books for the past like two weeks. But I don't have much left of it. I did get the book from my library. Oh yeah, you guys saw me get this book from my library in a vlog a couple weeks ago. I need to return it later this week. I have that much left. Maybe I'll finish that tonight, we will see. So far in Vicious, I'm really liking it. I've heard a lot of people really like the first book in this duology, but they don't like the second book as much because it apparently jumps a little bit too much between POVs and timelines. It does do that in this book. So I'm interested after I'm after I finish this, I already know I'm going to read the second book. It jumps a lot with POVs and timelines in this one. So with people having a little bit of an issue with that in the second book, I'm interested to see how much more that happens because it happens a lot in this one. I don't even know how to describe Vicious. It's fantasy, but it's more like real world with like a little bit of magic intertwined in it. There are certain people throughout the world who are extraordinary. They're called EOs and they're very rare and you become an EO because of a specific situation that happens to you or a specific type of situation that happens to you. It's basically about two best friends who are no longer best friends and they hate each other and they're just vengeful and they're vicious people and they're going after each other. Eli and Victor. There's no romance in this. I don't want there to be any romance in this. So what I'm about to say does not mean I need romance in it because I literally know. However, I think all of their problems would be fixed if they just kissed. They're so obsessed with each other. They're so obsessed with each other. Just a, just one, but just a smooch would solve a lot of their problems. I need to see how long I need to read today. Eight hours was just so much yesterday. I ended up finishing Vicious. It took me a little bit. I was so tired because I'd been doing things this entire past weekend and just staying up too late, but also waking up too early. So it took me a long time to actually finish the ending of this but i finished it i am gonna give it four and a half stars i really did love this i think the second one still follows victor i'm not sure if some of the other characters that we saw in here are going to be in that one probably probably most of them we will see the writing style was just so good the way it was written was just so good it flowed so nicely and it was just so entertaining and also kept me on edge like slightly because you're like, what's gonna happen? Let's see how long I need to read today. Guys, I literally got one. I'm gonna read longer than that. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. 
I'm gonna read for an hour. I'm thinking I'm gonna start Thirst, which this is that queer gothic vampire novel. This is by an Argentinian author. I feel like it's gonna be good. It's only 220 pages. This is a new release from Penguin Random House. It's out now and I'm obsessed with the cover. I'm gonna read this for an hour and then I might spin the wheel and see how long I need to read tomorrow and maybe read a little bit of those hours today because an hour, that's nothing. Whatever, let's get going. Got my coffee. I don't remember where I got this cup from, but it says booked for the weekend, which is so cheesy. I don't care, I'm kind of embracing the cheese. There we go. The one hour is already done. 60 pages into the book. I kind of want to read. I definitely, no, I definitely want to read longer today. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and see how many hours I need to read tomorrow. And then maybe, hopefully it'll be high and then I'll read some of those today. Or I'll just read more today and then start fresh tomorrow, we'll see. Watch it give me one hour again, that would be kind of tragic. It gave me nine. Okay, I'm gonna start reading a little bit of tomorrow's hours. planning on including audiobooks in this video, but then mm, I recognize that my Spotify renewed, so I am gonna include audiobooks this week and in this video. One of the books that got chosen in my March TBR was The Blonde Identity, and it has really good narrators. It bounces back and forth between MMC's POV and the FMC's POV, and there's both a male and a female narrator. So I went ahead and started listening to this earlier while I organized a few of my books today and then I also went antiquing today so I was listening to it. I got this mirror. I've been trying to find something to go here forever and I finally found this mirror today. Anyways, while I was antiquing today, organizing my books, I listened to this. He just told somebody touch her and I will kill you. Why is he like so, why is he hot? Why is he so hot? Oh my gosh, he's shooting people, he's shooting people. He's killing people. <laughs> Cause they posed a threat to her. They've known each other for two days. And he's already like, touch her and you die. And he follows through. Mr. Man has me blushing. Unpopular opinion apparently because I, oh, I made the mistake of going and looking at the Goodreads reviews because I was on Goodreads adding this book to like currently reading so I could update people in real time. And I was like, you know what? Let's go look at the reviews. Let's do it. They're not looking good. They're not looking good. Especially for my friends, like my friends on Goodreads, not looking good. Um, a lot of people don't like this book. It kind of gives me the same cheesiness as like an Allie Hazelwood book. What's another really cheesy book that I've read? I don't know, it's definitely cheesy and quirky, but I kind of like it. Like I'm actually really enjoying the audiobook. I thought it was about, hold on. I want to make sure I'm not going to spoil anything. Oh, okay, I'm not going to spoil anything because it's in the summary. I thought it was about two spies. It's not about two spies. It's the guy is a spy and then the girl, I mean, she's not a spy. She wakes up and she has amnesia and she can't remember who she is. And so she ends up being stuck with a spy because of some circumstances that you're gonna have to read the book and find out. But basically she's traveling with the spy now because she doesn't know who she is and he's kind of protecting her because they're in a little bit of a predicament together. And it's just, it's just cute. And he's kind of hot. Someone tried to look up her skirt when they were like, above and someone was below them and he had two guns in his hands because he just got done shooting the fuck out of the bad guys ah! and he still still flipped this guy off the way she like described it was so mild but i'm sitting there like don't just gloss over that girly that was hot one quirk about this fmc though is she doesn't like swearing so every time he says a bad word she's like language which is i think some people will find annoying it's just like it's just a quirk is that kind of annoying? Yeah, a little bit because he tries to say like hell and he's like heck. I don't mind it though. Did I tell y'all how far 
how many hours I got today. I am at five hours and 15 minutes. Girl, I've been flying. I'll read for another 15 and get it down to five hours. So I only have to read five hours tomorrow. This is what we'll be starting with in the morning. What's hilarious is these two have to fake date. I did not expect there to be fake dating because this is such a short time span. Who knew? This author really is squeezing it all in in the span of like what's probably gonna be six days. Unless she has a part later in the book where she's like one week later or something. This is so fast paced. Like I keep reminding myself, hey, it's been two days. It's been two days and they're already fake dating. I didn't even know there was gonna be fake dating in it. Not even fake dating, fake married. This read would be perfect to read in the summer. So if you are thinking about adding this book to your TBR, the perfect summer read. Like I just imagine you going on vacation, going to the beach, or just trying to like unwind and truly not use your brain. And this is what you pick up and you're just gonna have a fun time. Just picturing you on a beach somewhere, relaxing and giggling your ass off to this. Perfect. Save it for the summer. Not one brain cell is needed. Not one. <laughs> It is the way. It's like eight in the morning and I'm already sleepy. That's not a good sign. That's really not a good sign. Good morning, guys. I'm hoping the number generator gives me like, what kind of number can I work with? Five. Five. Five is ideal. Six, also ideal. Anything above eight, like, come on. I've already had two days, like an eight and a nine day, even though I split the nine day up, but like that already happened. Let's spin it. Oh, it gave me six. I can work with six. I can work with six. I finished The Blonde Identity late last night. I think I'm gonna give this book 3.75 stars. It was so fun, but again, it's quirky and it definitely has its flaws. Something you really have to forget if you read this book is that the two main characters have known each other for just four days. They say I love you, after four days, I was loving it. And then I got three fourths of the way through and I was like, oh wait, they've literally known each other for four days. Did they just say I love you? Not realistic, just fun and giggly, really. That's it. Emphasis on the not realistic. I think I'm gonna try and get through Thirst today. I have a little bit over 100 pages left, but the way the book is set up and published, it's so easy to fly through every single page. There's not that many words on each page. I feel like I can get through that and then start another book. I was planning on starting Love on the Brain after I finished Thirst and The Blonde Identity, but mm, mm, I have a couple fantasy books on my shelf that are calling my name. I don't know why fantasy is just sounding so good to me at the moment and I'm actually really enjoying it. done with thirst. If you like vampires, I feel like you'll like this novel. I mean, it's obviously fantasy because there's vampires in it, but don't go into it if you are going to read this with the mindset of it's gonna be this fantasy world of vampires. That's not at all what it is. It's kind of like a lit fic book. Like it very much felt like literary fiction in a way. It follows the life of this one vampire girl. And then there's another character that we see in the prologue of the book. And then she comes back around later and it's like a future girl who interacts with the vampire. The way it flowed from telling the vampire story and then jumped to the present day this random girl and her story and then how it intertwined it was just a good read if you like vampires and literary fiction there you go we're sitting at oh my gosh it took me like three hours to get through 120 pages that's not too bad but i felt like while i was in the coffee shop earlier there was just so much going on that i kept getting distracted and then having to read sentences over and over again happens to the best of us i forgot my headphones two hours and 58 minutes left should i book around and start panicle Oh my God. <laughs> Manacled is Draco Malfoy and Hermione fan fiction. I believe Taylor is actually still reading Manacled right now. She was reading it when she came to visit me last week. But I hear it's a little bit of like Handmaid's Tale vibes, which I haven't actually read the book for that, but I want to and I haven't seen the show either. I need to, I know. I didn't get into watching TV or shows until actually this year. 
I'm very much someone who re-watches the same show over and over again. How I Met Your Mother. I'm brand I'm trying to branch out a little bit, so maybe I will get to that sometime. Will it have page numbers? I don't know if it's gonna have page numbers because it's a fan fiction. Estimate wise, I've seen some people who have printed it out and binded it, and it was pretty thick. So I'm gonna say it's probably like the equivalent of 800 pages. I could be wrong, but I think it's pretty long. Summary, Harry Potter is dead in the aftermath of the war. In order to strengthen the might of the magical world, Voldemort enacts a repopulation effort. Hermione Granger has an order secret, lost but hidden in her mind, so she is sent as an enslaved surrogate to the High Reeve until her mind can be cracked. I'm 11% into Manacled, and it feels like it's talking in circles so far. I just feel like it's just going around and around and around and around so far. And I'm personally not somebody who likes books that are drawn out. I like you to get to the point. And sometimes, yeah, you could be a little wordy and give a little detail, but when you're just wordy and not occasionally wordy, I, I, I don't like that. That's not something I like when reading. If you read the trigger warnings for this fan fiction, like, don't overlook them because they're for real and they're really sad and the beginning of this is just sad and I've heard this entire fan fiction is very devastating so it's all gonna be sad I need to see how long I need to read today I really don't want to read for long like I'm not invested into this fan fiction yet I'm gonna give it at least until 50% before I make the decision to DNF. That's something I'm trying to do with most books, like kind of give it till 50%. Because some of my favorite books, I had to like get into them a little bit and then it was like, like some of my Mariana Zapata books, you have to like get into at least 45, 50%. And then you're like, damn, this is iconic. Wait, this is like amazing. It gave me two. Oh my God, the relief that I just felt in my heart. It's crazy how it takes me an entire hour just to read 5% of this fan fiction. You're gonna hear me say this a thousand times throughout this video. This fan fiction is huge. So long, so long. I haven't read a book of this length since I think Nectar of War was the last book that I read that was really long back in January. And I'm still hesitant about it. It's very well written so far but I feel like it's very drawn out still. Thankfully, it's not dragging as bad as it was the first 10%. I swear, the first 10% was dragging and going in circles. I would like to get to 40% by the end of the day. 40, 45, 50 actually, but that's pushing it. I don't think I could get to 50%. I would love to get a little further into it because I wanna finish this fan fiction before the end of the video. I'm not sure if that will happen, Maybe I'll read an extra few days so that it can happen. I have a lot left. Good morning, last day doing the number generator. Let me pull her up. I'm nervous, why am I nervous? It gave me six, only six. Okay, that's really not that bad. I'm gonna read for six hours today try and get through as much as manacled as I can get through. And if I don't finish it, honestly, maybe I'll extend this video a few more days so that I can finish it because I want to give you my final thoughts of it. And I would hate to wait till the end of the month with my reading wrap up. She just let her hair down. <laughs> that's it, that's the only thing, that's literally what happened. She just let her hair down. <gasps> this is not a giggly book. So the fact that something is making me giggle right now, ah! I needed it. I needed this giggle. Oh my god, they're starving. They're starving. Ah! What's that from? I think that's from my coffee. Everybody is pissing me off. Everybody in this fan fiction ah! is pissing me off. Not Hermione. Draco. I, he's pissing me off in a different light, okay? He's pissing me off in like a, it's all gonna be okay. 
eventually. You know what I mean? You know? Um, every side character on the good side, like, <laughs> the optimism of the people on the good side. It's been a really long time since I've read actual Harry Potter. Like I was a child, I was 12 when I read those books. So if I get any lingo wrong, just womp womp. Okay, it's gonna be fine. The people on the good side, like Harry Potter side and the order, they're pissing me off. They're too optimistic and they're very much in this book because there's a war going on. They're very much love prevails all type people. The good will win people and I'm like that's not always the case and Hermione's like that's not always the case and you can't always fight evil with abundantly good. Now we also have the Voldemort side which is just bad. You know they're bad but I feel like these people are trying to be so good that they're bad. Yikes! And Hermione's just in this little gray area right here and Draco's also in this little gray area right here. I'm in the flashback so I'm seeing everything that had happened before Hermione lost her memory because you start off the fan fiction with Hermione not having most of her memories of what happened during the war between the good and the bad. Ugh! I just feel this like boiling rage in me in, a, in like the best way possible. Yeah. I'm not doing good. I'm not doing good. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm okay, okay. Oh my god, I literally can't control myself. I, I keep giggling because I am on the verge of tears because I'm so angry. They're like rage tears. I'm above crying on the internet. Um, Hold on, let me read this sentence real quick. Oh my god, guys, guys, this is fucked up. I hate, I hate, I like, I can't even say who I hate right now because I don't want to spoil anything. I have never had a book make me feel so angry where I wanted to cry. Where if I wasn't recording this and trying to keep my emotions in check, I would cry. Like, I'm so, I'm so angry. Like, it's too, it, mm. <laughs> I feel I feel sick to my stomach. Like I just feel ill. <laughs> oh my god. And depressed. And also I haven't seen the sun in about a week, so that's really not helping either. What I do want to say is if you guys ever recommend me a book or a fan fiction, that is as sad as Manacled was, first off, don't. Second off, count your days. Count your days. I really don't have much to say other than the fact that it was just 370,000 plus words of despair which I don't think I was fully prepared going into it. Like I did read all the triggers. I didn't expect all of the triggers to happen throughout the span of the entire fan fiction. That's my bad. I just wasn't prepared going into it. It very much felt like a little life and you cannot compare these two books and, and there's no way to compare them. But I think the way it just got worse and worse and worse in a little life, that was basically the entirety of Manacled. It just kept getting worse and worse and worse for a really long time. I think the writing, while so drawn out in this fan fiction, it was beautiful. I think this just wasn't my vibe. Like, I don't want to feel that much despair, if I'm being honest. I don't want to feel that much sadness. People who do, like, all power to you. Happy for you. If you want to feel despair for that long and sick to your stomach for a very long time, this is the fan fiction for you. Unfortunately, <laughs> I don't want to read <laughs> that type of stuff. So this was really difficult for me to get through and I can read some pretty heavy scenes in books, but I think when an entire fan fiction or an entire book is heavy, I can only tolerate that once a year. This was my one sad, devastating read for the year.
there will be no more. I can't take anymore. I will be sick to my stomach for the next month. That was just so brutal. I'm gonna go read Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. My next few reads are just gonna be silly, stupid, giggly romances that I'm probably gonna end up giving four stars, but they're actually trash. Because my brain can't, I can't, I can't even get words out. Um, but if you want to feel devastation and despair for a really, really long time, maybe try out Manacle. Thank you guys. I am trying. <laughs> I'm trying to conjure like a little pep in my step to end out this video, but I just want to cry. <laughs> I love you guys. Holy fuck, I am about to cry. I love you guys. And I will see you next week. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'll see you next week.